So I <clears throat> thought I'd try to make a quick video. Um, you know, I'm stuck up here at my mom's house uh, doing the death watch and, uh, um, you know, the lighting I'm sure is terrible. We'll see how this video turns out, but I just thought I'd talk about things because I literally have nothing to do. I mean, I'm, I'm from Florida, man. <laughs> It's too damn cold up here to go out hiking, and I'm telling you, there's nothing to do in Virginia. You know, this this state, uh, well, especially in Lynchburg, Virginia, you know, can't play racquetball because they they all the racquetball courts they they don't know when they play open racquetball, and you know, I don't know anybody to play racquetball with, and then all the tennis courts are private, so you can't play tennis and. Uh, Golf courses, well, at this time of the year, I'm not playing golf at 40 degrees out there, you know, screw that. I'm not being out there for 18 holes. Hell, I went out hiking the other day. I did six miles, and I got home, and I got sick as a result because I'm not used to the cold. Anyway, that's enough on me. So let's just talk about things. We know that uh, Trudeau's gone full-fledged uh, uh, Hitler on the uh, Canadians, and, uh, you know, I, I feel sorry for him. I, I hope he doesn't seize their bank accounts and... Uh, tow their trucks and uh, penalize them in ways that the dictator will do and I hope I hope he pays the price and you, if you go back in my videos I I gave my opinion of that whole situation um, probably a little bit more vulgar than I probably should have so that that's a done deal and uh, I think the Canadians sparked a worldwide revolution we'll see what happens and uh, but you know the the purpose of this video is 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 not to talk about well talk about world events just a little bit, um, you know a lot of a lot of provinces have uh, given up their their mandates, uh, political class, uh, uh, you know, they're giving up uh, some of their power. I mean reluctantly for sure. So we'll see where the whole situation goes. Uh, you know, people against the uh, politariat or whatever you want to call them, uh, the, the the political ruling class, but. Uh, so, but I, you know, I wanted to talk about history just a little bit because, you know, we go to these stadiums and, uh, and when I saw the, uh, you know, well, I won't call them friends. I had acquaintances and I lost a lot of acquaintances because I refused to watch uh, Major League Baseball. I stopped watching uh, uh, NFL football because uh, I'm a veteran, you know, I fought in Iraq and uh and when they took a knee and disrespected the national anthem, I don't think they understood the implications of that. And so I just wanted to talk history here a little bit. So let's talk about the national anthem, okay? And I can't remember the name of the fort. Isn't that terrible? But anyway, um, Francis Scott Key, okay, he, uh, he decided he was going to row out to the British ships and, uh, and ask them, uh, you know, to... Uh, well, not surrender, but just say, you know, look, you know, can we negotiate? He wanted to, he was going to be a negotiator. And he got on the British ship, and the British commander was being pretty nice to him, and uh, it was actually going to be an exchange of prisoners. A lot of people don't understand that, because on the, on the uh, revolutionary side, the Americans had a lot of prisoners, and the British had a lot of prisoners, and they were in these cages down in the hull of the ship. And, of course, uh, they, I mean, to tell you back then, men had honor. And uh, so he got to go down and visit with the prisoners, and he told them, he says, you're going to be free soon. We're going to do a one, there was going to be a one-to-one -one negotiation. Not, not this crap that Obama did, giving away five terrorists for one American, you know. Let's not even talk about that stupid stuff. But no, it was going to be a one-to-one -one exchange. And uh, so um, he came back up, and he says, yeah, I agree to your terms. Let's exchange the prisoners at least, or get them out of the cages in the hull of the ship. And the British commander said, well, that won't be necessary at this point. Francis Scott Key didn't understand what was going on. He said, well, what are you talking about? I thought we had come to an agreement. And uh, the British commander looked at him and he said, uh, well, he says, look out to sea. Because I think it was only like 10 British ships. Uh, that's what I've heard in history. I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, that was 200 and some years ago. I mean, the victors write the story. You never know. And uh, But anyway, he looked out to sea and there was there was... 100, 150 ships, British ships coming across the sea, uh, just c came within sight over the horizon. And uh, the British commander, he goes, uh, you have to surrender the fort. Uh, and, of course, there was a flag in the middle of the fort. Uh, and I'll get you the, uh, a link to what the name of the fort was. Uh, and so they, they came across, and the British commander said, uh, either surrender the fort 
or we're going to bombard it. And Francis Scott Key told him, he says, well, there's women and kids in that fort. You're going you're gonna to open up a bombardment with all these cannons? And he says, unless they take down the flag. He says, they have to take down the flag. Otherwise, uh, we're going we're gonna to blow the hell out of the fort. And, uh, and so Francis Scott Key goes, he says, well, I haven't been given, given that ability to surrender the fort. He says, I was just coming out here to do a one-to-one -one prisoner exchange. And uh, so the British commander, he goes, well, I'm sorry. I'm under my orders, because uh, I guess a British admiral had come in on the ships. He says, uh, and so they opened fire that night. And I hope you can kind of look back on the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can we see by the dawn's early lights. Okay, so at the dawn's early lights, what was amazing is after they bombarded it all night long, maybe 100 ships, 150 ships, nobody will know for sure, the flag was still standing. So let's think about the words of that song. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early lights. Oh, so proudly we hail that the flag was still standing in the rain. So you can kind of get into the, the spirit of the song. So what had happened was the British had bombarded the fort all night long and the flag was still standing. And, and back then, like I said, some men were honorable and the British commander, he says, well, he gave Francis Key back his, his, his rowboat, and so he rode back to the fort. He didn't understand what had happened because everybody in the fort had to be dead, right? I mean, all those cannonballs flowing in, and when he got to the fort, there were dead bodies. Dead bodies hold, holding up the flag because they wouldn't let it fall. So, when... When somebody at Black Lives Matter takes a knee at an NFL football game and disrespects those people that gave up their lives to hold that flag up. Okay, now Francis Scott Key, all he wrote was a poem. And of course, later on, it got adapted into our national anthem. But I want you to know the sacrifice that people have given up for this country to keep us free. And I don't, I don't think they understand how disrespectful they are to our ancestors and to the veterans, okay, uh, that have that fought for this country. Uh, and that's why I will never watch an NFL football game ever again. I will never watch a Major League Baseball game ever again. Now, I don't think the National Hockey League has ever taken a knee. Now, Justin Trudeau has. That son of a bitch. I hope he rots in hell, that dictator you know, just declared martial law in Canada. You know, that tells you what he's all about. He, he let Black Lives, Black, Black Lives Matter burn down churches in Canada. Do you see where the left is coming from? Where these progressive idiots, these dictators, they don't care, man. That's it. Peace out. Stay free. You know what? I, I, I'm going to do the mantra on this video. It's good to live in the free, well... Until I get out of Virginia, I, I'm not wishing my mom to die soon, but I mean, I don't want her to suffer. You know, I hope you can understand that um, because I'm here in Virginia. But it's good to live in the free Republican state of Florida where we have no vaccine mandates, no mask requirements, no jab requirements. And we are free to come and do as we please under the great leadership of Governor DeSantis. And if you're a Democrat, if you're a Democrat, if you're a totalitarian, go to New York. Go to California, you know, if you're for vax mandates, if you're for mask requirements on your kids, you know, you mask them kids up. I, I go, Put three freaking masks on them, okay, because they're going to be dumber than shit because they're not going to learn a gosh dang thing in school. And I guarantee you all the Republican kids, kids that live in Florida, they're going to learn what they need to know and they're going to be smart. Your kids are going to be stupid, but put three masks on them. Peace out. Stay free.